welcome all of you. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm Julia Himberg. I'm the Director of Film and Media Studies at ASU. Um, and I just want to sort of briefly introduce our panel today because this is sort of part of a larger project here um, in FMS where, you know, we hope in your courses that you're gaining skills to help you become a strong media maker. Um, and panels like these are the ones that are designed to kind of give you information about what careers our alumni go into um, and to have an opportunity to get advice from them, to hear about their experiences. Um, and today's topic in particular, social media networking, was actually specifically designed to address this topic that we learned last year from a series of alumni panels that we did. Some of you may have also um, joined um, those. We really learned that this was an important um, question that students had about, I realize this is important to figuring out um, how I might connect with others um, and potentially get interviews and internships and jobs. Um, and so we wanted to really focus on that in this panel. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and get started. What's gonna happen here is I'm gonna just introduce you to our two moderators. They are current FMS students um, and they have very graciously agreed to moderate today's session. They're then gonna introduce you to our panelists um, and then we'll get started. Um, I wanna to emphasize too, if you have questions along the way, um, please put them in the chat. We'll do our best to get to as many as possible. We're gonna have our panelists answer um, a few questions that we've written up for them. Um, and then we're gonna save time for Q&A for your questions at the end. So definitely along the way, drop those in the chat and we will um, keep track of them and get to as many as we can. So uh, let me introduce you to our first moderator who's Sam Ellefson, sorry, Sam. Um, Sam is a senior um, who is getting dual degrees in film and media studies and also journalism. And he's the editor of State Press Magazine. I hope many of you are familiar with State Press. Um, and the lead programmer and founder of the Film Club at ASU, which I also encourage you to attend their events, which are fantastic. Um, in 2024, Sam will graduate with a master's degree in mass communication from ASU before pursuing a postgraduate cinema studies degree in Scandinavia. And our second um, moderator today is Cassidy Wanschneider, and she is a junior at ASU, majoring in film and media studies with a minor in filmmaking. And after graduation, she hopes to work in film distribution or social media marketing. So hopefully also Cassidy, you will gain some insights today. And now Sam, I'll pass it off to you. Thanks, Julia. Uh, so our first alumni panelist that I'd like to introduce is Jasmine Figueroa. Jasmine is a member of the class of 2020. Uh, she currently works as an office coordinator for Paradox, an HR technology company headquartered in Scottsdale. Uh, during her time at ASU, she interned for NBC Universal, utilizing social media to promote new film and television releases and coordinating marketing events on the Tempe campus. She also interned at the Sundance Film Festival and attended several weekend learning seminars with industry professionals in casting and producing from Marvel Studios and Paramount Pictures. At Paradox, Jasmine has helped create internal office procedures in a growing startup and has also assisted in internal usage film campaigns with the marketing team. Thanks for joining us, Jasmine. Thank you. Um, and our second, sorry, go ahead. I said thank you um, for introducing <laughs> Yes. And our second panelist is Brandon Marlowe. Uh, Brandon is a member of the class of 2014. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts in Me uh, Film and Media Studies degree from ASU and relocated to California, where he worked in the entertainment industry for a number of years um, on productions for platforms such as Netflix and HBO Max. In 2019, Brandon and his partner founded Rainbow Media Co., an LGBTQ plus media and production company with a massive following of over 10 million individuals across multiple social media platforms. RMC now operates the most followed queer accounts globally and generates hundreds of millions of views annually through its expansive distribution network. Thanks for joining us, Brandon. And then I'll just pass it on to Cassidy. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce our first question, which is going to be how can current students start networking on social media platforms? And I'm going to start by asking uh, Rain this question. Before you do that, Rain, let me just jump in to introduce you quickly. Um, so 
Um, Rain is class of 2018, and after graduating from Film and Media Studies at ASU, she moved to New York as a research associate for Material, a market research firm. And after focusing on entertainment, apparel, and beauty research for three years, Rain moved on from her analytic background to pursuing her calling of creative production. And in 2022, she relocated to Los Angeles as a junior creative producer for the apparel brand Jenny Kane. And along with this, Rain continues to work freelance, developing her personal portfolio and artistic practice. So thank you, Cassidy. Um, Rain, you can go ahead and answer that first question. Sounds good. Hello, everybody. Um, Cassidy, will you repeat that question for me one more time? Of course. Um, how can current students start networking on social media platforms? Cool. Thank you. Um, so. I guess from my background, I um, have always marketed myself through social media. So uh, I guess the first step is just understanding like who you are. Um, and I try to divest a lot from this like branding of yourself. Um, I think that that can really, I think a lot of us hear it um, if you're on social media right now, like niching down or like really focusing who you are. And I think that actually like being yourself on social media uh, is going to be the best option, especially if you're using that to network, right? You don't want to curate your platform so much so that like who you are is not who you're going to be in the interview, right? Like you're going to meet these people. So um, I think the focus for me has always been Instagram primarily, and then uh, LinkedIn also, of course, like tandemly. And I don't want to... Um, short the importance of LinkedIn uh, in the creative field, because at the end of the day, like we know that the network you build is the network you build. However you build that is um, up to you. But LinkedIn is really, really a truly great place to figure out number one, what jobs are available um, because you don't know what you don't know. So you can see what kind of jobs you can look for. Um, and then number two, um, just being able to like reach out to someone. So um, I'm a big LinkedIn promoter. Um, I don't use it that often, but it is like my favorite way to make connections with people professionally. Um, I currently use my Instagram in the same way and I treat it as like a visual portfolio. Um, and then, yeah, I think the best bet is to number one, um, it, like post what represents you. And then number two, make meaningful connections that don't just exist on the platform, um, but also can extend to real life or have like foundationally come from real life. So those are my two, I think, key tips. Um, but number one being don't, don't knock LinkedIn. I know it seems really corporate. I know it seems really like, you know, buttoned up, but there are creatives on LinkedIn. And most importantly, the hiring teams are on LinkedIn. So don't, forget about LinkedIn, you guys. And it doesn't have to be like a crazy business headshot, that kind of thing, like be yourself on every platform. So that's my answer. Thank you so much. And I was wondering if I could also pass this question on to Jasmine as well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, being at ASU and utilizing social media, I think while I was there, I kind of didn't realize the gravity of like social media networking and that what it had. And I think I kind of learned that after I left um, and I can speak from like the experience I'm gaining right now. So I currently, to Rain's point, I work for an HR technology company that specializes in marketing themselves on LinkedIn and things like that. And so the power of LinkedIn really is big. I mean, any company, media company, NBC Universal, Paramount, they post their jobs on LinkedIn. Their hiring teams are there searching for people on LinkedIn. And like I said, I kind of was late to the game. Like I had an account, but maybe had two connections there. Um, and then in the last year, I've kind of grown that. And I think I one thing I didn't realize was the power of even just growing your mindset outside of media, if that's growing your mindset in business connections or in marketing, like I understood that marketing was kind of a separate entity than film and media, but you know, at the company I work now, there's so many avenues that I could take my degree in film and media and use that there. And that was something I kind of didn't get that I kind of had this one track mind of, I want to work, you know, for these specific media companies 
And I think I didn't realize kind of the power of what you can do with your degree. You can use it in so many opportunities. Like I kind of went from one film and media and now I work in a completely different field. Um, but again, I'm still using my degree every day. The internships that I had where I utilize social media to plan events, like that's something I still do every day. Like I plan events here at my company and a lot of the experience I gained at ASU kind of helped me in this role today. I think that all the time, like, wow, this reminds me of when I planned this event at ASU and it was, you know, it felt like, how am I ever going to get through this? And that, you know, day to day, I deal with that as well. Thank you so much. And I would also like to ask the same thing for Brandon. In terms of beginning your networking through social media, I think it's really important to acknowledge that for most students, you're in this transitionary period from leveraging social media for your person versus your business or what you want to be doing post-education. Um, but my biggest um, suggestion is just put yourself out there. So every job opportunity that I've had has been through social media outreach for a, one degree to another. Um, and specifically, like, I'll just kind of give you an overview of how I went through this and Julia kind of witnessed this process was everything in entertainment comes in a very unconventional way. So while I really love LinkedIn, kind of once you're in a certain market or looking for a career change within a certain um, department, just getting into it can be the really difficult thing. So how are you going to do that? Who are you going to talk to? How are you going to make that connection? And for me, when I was in school, it would be reading the acknowledgments in a book. If there was someone who I really loved, who did he acknowledge? How am I going to reach out to them? It's also really important to know your audience and to go into those interactions um, with the right intention. So it could be watching the credits of a television show that you really love. Like, who are those crew members? Who can you reach out to to build that personal connection? Because your voice can kind of get lost on something like LinkedIn sometimes. Um, so just reaching out appropriately and saying, hey, this is who I am. This is kind of the opportunity I'm looking for. Is there anyone that you could connect me with? Presenting materials that kind of support who you are um, and why you might be the right person for them to believe in, to pass your name along. Like that is how things work in entertainment is sadly it is who you know. And so how you build those connections is kind of up to you. But there are a lot of ways. I did it on Facebook because my time in school, like that was still the platform that everyone was using to meet people. So for instance, I wanted to work on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. I reached out to one of his segment producers who then passed my resume and portfolio on to the executive producer who then called to see what I'd be interested in doing for the show. Um, so it's just really important to like have a vote of confidence for yourself in the outreach. Like you have to pound the pavement. You have to just be constantly um, looking for people, looking for that connection. So I think just making sure that to uh, Rain's point, you are presenting yourself authentically, but also really remembering that everything you do online, this is going to sound so old fogey, but lives on forever. So really making sure like authenticity doesn't, doesn't mean posting everything all of the time. Like really be thoughtful with the content that you're creating. Um, because again, like they are going to use that to hire you or somebody else. Thank you so much. Um, we can move on to the next question. We talked a little bit about LinkedIn and the importance of like kind of building a personality on there, but could maybe one of you or all three of you talk about some other sites or platforms that you recommend for online social media networking? Jasmine, are you going to go? <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Well, I think one of the big things is looking directly on their websites. That was something I did like when I graduated. I applied to probably maybe 20 different media companies, big names from big names to small names. And a lot of them said, you know, you weren't right for this position, but in the future, there's one position that we think um, you'd be great for. And they did actually reach back out to me a few months later. So I think part of it is, you know, looking directly. If you find a company that you're really interested in, you know, I had experience working as a campus ambassador for NBC Universal. So that was something I searched their website and it was always, you know, a matter of you need some more experience here or there, but they had my name kind of in their mindset. I think that was kind of the best thing as I kind of went directly to the source, emailed them back. Um, there was also a local media company in Phoenix that I had got to the third interview for, and it came down to a matter of they wanted somebody who just was more, it was a uh, 
a media sales coordinator. So somebody who would be working with the sales uh, account executives and working on advertisements and things like that. And it truly came down to, they wanted someone more with a sales background, but they took the time, I think, to give me that, um, feedback because I researched kind of the background of that media company, what they looked for, what their values were. So I think taking the time to research also where you're applying to is really big. And I see that now in like my current company. Um, I think when you're applying to places, it's very valuable to know backstory about them, know what their company values, know what they're looking for. So you can kind of position yourself to be that in your interview. Um, Yeah, just to add on to that, um, I think some of my favorite ones, I work mostly like back uh, below the line. Um, And so uh, some of my favorite like platforms are actually like crew hiring databases. Um, And so I I use Array Crew, which is Ava DuVernay's um, crew platform. It's a really great one. Um, and then there's another one called Art Cube. If you're interested in in art develop arts development, um, it does have a small subscription fee if you're based out of New York. But if you're outside of there, it's a really great one as well. Um, and then I think of like for me, I haven't used it, but I think I understand the power of it. But TikTok, um, and I, I I think like to Brandon's point, be careful what you're what you're posting because this, you know, this algorithm kind of moves the way that it wants. Um, but it is very, a very, very good amplifier if you have um, a clear intention. And I will say Instagram, I still think is the best um, platform for social media networking right now, because it's a real hybrid of business and personal. So now a lot of companies have teams solely allocated to development of um careers so they have special teams in place to be checking the dms to see who's applying or showing interest in a position um so i feel like it's just a really interesting platform for like your personal development within a certain career path because you have an immediate connection to that company someone is always checking the dms like it's very rare for any reputable company not to have someone every day going through looking to see what people are submitting or asking um So I feel like if you can tap into that and almost come up with a script for yourself that you have in your notes that you can copy and paste to businesses, adjusting accordingly to whatever that position may be that you're interested in within the company, um, you're more likely to have someone's eyes on it, which is really important. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah. Should we transition to the next question? Um, Yep. I was going to go ahead and ask you, um, were there any certain keywords you used to communicate your skills while networking on um, these given sites? Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I think that's like one of the hardest things um, actually about pursuing a career in the creative field is that there are so many titles. Um, and there's a couple of general ones that I think align with where you want to be. Um, for example, for myself, like I think early on when I was um, applying to positions, I just consider myself a film editor. Um, and it, that is really restrictive. And you sometimes don't want to be too restrictive when you're initially networking, um, just because sometimes like HR does look for keywords. Um, so I think like finding a general um, terminology for what you're trying to pursue is great. For example, when I figured out what, like the title of creative producer, that and like that went into my, that's what I started calling myself. And I think for me, like I'm a multi-hyphenate. So it is really hard to kind of like size down and get um, intentional about what to call yourself. Um, But if you can find a general terminology, like creative producer, um, filmmaker, uh, let's see. Producer is just a really good term. If you if you are someone who creates something and you organize um, events, you organize shoots, you organize productions, um, it's okay to start calling yourself a producer as you are now. And I think that that's something that um, 
as young people, as people coming out of college, you don't want to call yourself some of these titles, director, producer, um, you know, manager, et cetera, because you feel like you're just entering your career. But the fact of the matter is, is that you've done, if you've done that work, um, you qualify. Um, and it's a, the best way to represent the work that you've done. And it's just owning that, like Brandon said, I think owning who you are and like, putting down like, and just like owning who you are and using the title that best represents the work that you've done and the work that you want to do. Um, and that's as long as you have the portfolio to back it up and the references to back it up, it's okay to call yourself those kind of far reaching titles that you hear, you know, some of the people that you might be inspired by using. Um, and that's how I did it. It was like, okay, who who do I want to have a career modeled after and what do they call themselves, et cetera. And that's how I decided on the kind of keywords. Um, I also think that there's like some specific flexibilities that um, you can use in your um, portfolio and your resume. Um, flexibility is a really good one. Um, let's see, there's another like, I'm so sorry. Adaptable is another one. Um, especially if you find yourself doing multiple jobs, just kind of hinting at this idea of like, you can do a lot of things. And as long as that is represented in your resume, using those keywords is like really helpful. I'll go ahead and go. So I actually reached out to Professor Kevin Sandler when I was kind of on the job hunt last year. And one of the tips he gave with me that I kind of took in, and I think I started to see results too when I was interviewing for several companies, was companies want someone who is going to make their job easier. He wants somebody, they want someone who they're going to give work to, and they don't have to worry about it. And so that was something I kind of used to position myself as like, I'm someone, you know, I can handle any task given at me. Um, and I think I've like proven through prior work history, I talked about, you know, certain instances and even just college or high school jobs I had. I think finding a way to position yourself as somebody that can handle stress, handle any task given to them, I think that'll take you in any field that you want, specifically in media too as well. Um, you know, there's always problems, there's always issues, there's always, you know, uh, things that need to get done and they want somebody that they can trust. And I think if you have the ability to verbalize that you're a trustworthy person, that you are willing to kind of do whatever it takes also to get to the spot of where you wanna go and where you're trying to go, I think, people who are in those positions of hiring are going to recognize that they're going to recognize your drive. Um, and I think kind of just putting the two and two together of willing to do the work, I think is a big, a big thing. And then just garnering that trust, which also takes time with people. Uh, and I will just follow that up with, I don't know that I have a specific verbiage that I can recommend. Um, but the one thing that I would really put an emphasis on is your gratitude for the conversations and for the connections, for them taking the time to reply or for the interview. That um, probably served me the best in any sort of networking experience, like really in like believing that, really being grateful, telling them that you appreciate their time, that you appreciate any insight that they have. Um, but I really loved Rain's recommendation of like adaptable. I think that there's a trade-off now going from certain um, words like meticulous or punctual in your resumes to really building like your character through your resume so that you are passionate. There are so many other words that you can use now to elicit a certain like image of the type of employee or worker or creative person you're going to be. So I wouldn't sit online looking for adjectives to use to describe myself in my resumes like really think about the things that inspire you like inspired is a great one you know there's so many other ways that you can define who you are and what type of worker you're going to be thanks so much um we can transition to some chat questions now uh the first one being someone asked what are the key differences between a resume and a portfolio uh, Rain, I feel like this is you because you're creative. So this is going to be a good one for your wheelhouse. Um, yeah, it is. It, that was, I learned that one kind of like the hard way, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I didn't really move with the portfolio um, early in my career because I don't know. I just, I did not, I, I've been 
at the time I, based on like, um, kind of like my familial instruction and then what the, how the world was, it was like resume, CV, like put it on paper, make sure it's like, you know, the line, it's just boring. It was boring. (laughs) So it's like, um, I didn't move with the portfolio for a really long time. And then it became creative portfolios are creative resumes specifically are hard to put together sometimes based on the like, um, kind of existing resume metrics that exist. And so really the difference between a creative or a portfolio and a resume is that your resume is going to be primarily words. I do abide by the one page resume. Um, and for me, a resume is basically like, who, like, who am I, what is my job experience? And like, what are the like nitty gritty, not nitty gritty details, but what are the details about my work experience, um, that are going to make me an asset to whatever job I'm applying to. So your resume is very much like words, um, skills. It's really a place for that to shine. And then a portfolio is the place for your, um, creative work to shine. So say like on my resume, I would put, okay, I worked on this set, um, from this time to this time, here's what I did. Here's the details. Who's here's who I reported to, et cetera. Here's where I managed. And then in my portfolio, I would actually have like images or video, et cetera, of what I created on set. Right. Because you can't put the images you make, the films you make, et cetera, the marketing materials you create. It's hard to put that into a resume. Um, and really it's not the best, uh, format or medium to put your creative work. Um, and so typically you'll see, that's why sometimes creative jobs will ask for a resume and a portfolio. If you can think about it as like for every point on your resume, like for every work experience or like education experience you have on your resume, if you can match that with a visual in your portfolio, that's what it's about. So you're basically just like putting the proof into like what you're saying. Um, And that doesn't always apply depending on like what you're going to pursue. If you're going to pursue a more traditional marketing um, creative position, you might not need a portfolio, but even then in like ads and marketing and sales, they like to see a portfolio and that might consist of, you know, the creative that was produced. Also the like return on investment and those like, you know, detail details. So that's my difference. That's what I would say. Awesome. Did anyone else have anything they wanted to add to that question? Yeah, I'll just piggyback on that a little bit just by saying that if you're not in a creative position where you feel like a portfolio is relevant, there are still a lot of things that you're producing or working on every day. So say it's social media, like that's what my company does. If you're doing the back end of it, like creating a portfolio with the metrics and how things performed, like like there's still ways to create something that's high impact that really shows the work that you've contributed to. Um, and then just kind of going back to earlier questions about the networking and kind of submitting of your resumes and other documentation. A lot of them say for NBC Universal, when um, I was working for E, if anyone applied for a job, it would scan the resume for certain words and things like that. So you were really limited to how you would be received um, because that's how every resume is submitted. Basically, it was through the specific protocol and process. If you get it to a person, however, you have a much better chance of actually getting an interview or just starting that conversation. So that really goes back to like the blind submission to a lot of these websites is great because it's at least an entry point. But if you can get your materials to a person, any person, like it can keep being passed along. Whereas if it's submitted to a database, you are more restricted. So just keep that in mind. Like a person is always better. No one likes to call and get an automated voice when dealing with like a credit card. It's the same thing with the, with a job. So if you can submit your resume and your portfolio together to a specific person or department, you're probably going to have an easier or better experience. Thank you so much for that, Brandon. And I would like to introduce the next question in our chat. Um, Were any of you working and studying? And how did you balance transitioning into more focus on film and less into work, even though that's kind of how... You have to make money in that industry. I'll chime in on this one (laughs) Um, because 
I did this and it's fucking hard. And this is something that really everyone here, no matter what um, you're going to do creatively outside of your studies, nothing in entertainment is easy. And like, you all really need to reconcile that now that you're going to be working all day, every day, if you want to succeed. And that means surrendering any personal activities. Um, it means overworking yourself. So you are, there, there is really no good way to make that transition. Um, but like, that is what's going to set you apart from other people, like your work ethic and your drive and your willingness to say yes, when it's inconvenient to you doing things for free. Like, I can't tell you the number of things that I overextended myself with for free, just for the like hope that a seed would be planted and that I'd be called upon at some time because of my willingness to work. And that is how everything works in entertainment. It is thankless in the beginning and it's really hard and you're going to want to quit, but like that is going to be what propels your success later. So maybe Rain or Jasmine will have a better blueprint for you in that way. But from my experience, it's not an easy or fun transition, but it is worth it if you stick with it. Like if you are willing to put the hours in, you will succeed. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, like that is very true. Very, very true. Um, I think for me, I was in a, yes, Tika, I'm like, feel, I feel this question really hard because this is like something that I've only, pretty much in the past, like two years have like decided that I've like made a commitment to. Um, I worked three jobs through college. I was working 40 hours a week and full-time student um, at the time. And it is really hard to um, make that sacrifice, especially when, um, as a lot of us understand, like you're supporting your family and supporting yourself uh, completely. Sometimes um, the answer to that is that you're not going to work the job that you want to work straight out of university or straight out of college that you think you're going to work in the end. And for me, I can't, I, I've loved all my jobs that I've had, but like, this is the key for me was like, I did work so hard <laughs> in university and it was really, really strenuous on my mental health and like wellness that when it was time for me to look for jobs after college, I was like, no, I want a salary. <laughs> and a lot of, um, a lot of like creative and media positions don't offer that, um, at the, at the level that you are straight out of university. And so for me, it was a matter of like, okay, can I have this stability in a job um, that's going to pay me and so that I'm comfortable so that I can actually like think about what I want to do creatively um, and then pursue that. And I'm like, ha really happy to say it worked out. <laughs> um, like I'm on the other side now. And even though the job that I was doing before in market research it was focused on entertainment research. It was focused on apparel research, beauty research, things that I really like and research as a whole. I really like that. Um, it was, I did it for three years and it was one of those things that was like, okay, like I feel comfortable. I feel safe finally. So it's time to move on to this more specifically creative position. And I don't want to knock, it's hard to feel, or I, I can understand how it feels hard to not do the um, most creative thing initially, but you always have to remember that like you can pursue that in your personal work. And for me, that was the, that was the answer because I couldn't really afford to, I couldn't really afford to do a lot of the things that some of my peers have been able to do. And so the priority for me was making money and not like a ton of money, just money <laughs> to live in New York, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's okay to do a job that's not directly in the industry that you expect to work in, in your future. Um, I worked that job for three years. I'm now it's almost been a year in this position and I get to go to photo shoots every day and you never stop working hard. Like Brandon said, like you really never stop sacrificing. I was woke up late this morning because I was on set for 13 hours yesterday. <laughs> so it's like, you never stop. And no matter what, if it's important to you, you're going to find the time you're going to find a way to do it. And I, really want to emphasize Tika, like, I really, please connect with me after this. I understand. I just don't want to take up too much time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to balance the, the passion with, you know, your needs. And I am a big proponent of needs first, um, and doing what you can to make sure that you're safe and that you're serviced and you have what you need. 
Um, and the creative pathway is like always going to be there. And it's so different for so many people. Um, but it's hard transition. There's a lot of ways to do it, but make sure you're safe first. <laughs> Rain, that was so eloquent. It was really nice. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that was something I struggled with for quite a bit after I graduated was kind of, I was really kind of frustrated that I couldn't find my ground in the industry that I originally wanted to. And somebody like an adult, a trusted adult said to me, like, why don't you get some experience in something? Like get some experience where you can get something on your resume and do it for however long, you know, six to 18 months, get something under your belt, make connections. You may end up loving it and going a different path, or you may, may lead you down back to originally where you wanted to start. And I think, um, it's really hard when you're in school and you're young and you think I have to go down this way, this is where I need to go. And, but then when you don't get the opportunity immediately, I think it's really hard to kind of start, um, thinking that it's never going to happen. And, you know, you kind of have to just keep the mindset, like my time will come my time. You know, if I put in the work now, if I do the work, if I do this job and focus on this and do the best I can at this, um, and continue to work towards what I want. And that also, I think comes with kind of what Rain was saying needs first. I think, um, that's, what's most important, but it is also is important to keep you know, working on whatever it is your final goal is personally. So whether that be writing, whether that be producing, do that on the weekends, um, you know, keep doing it when you have the free time, if it is something you're super passionate about and you want to work towards that in the future. So yeah, definitely. Thank you, Rain, for that. And I think just one final thought on kind of something that summarizes this is don't be so rigid in where you think you should be or like the career path that right now you think you want to hold because especially in entertainment or anything creative, you're exposed to so much that if you're really rigid with like, this is the only career path for me, you can really end up alienating a lot of experiences or opportunities, because it doesn't align exactly with where you think you should be. But I'm sure that Rain and Jasmine can both speak to the fact that like, if you say yes to certain things, even if it's kind of a wonky route, you end up where you wanted to go. And so really just being receptive to any opportunity that comes your way, even if you feel like it's not really on par with what I want to do, that experience will lend you something, information, connection. So just keep yourself like your mind and your heart open to what opportunities present themselves. Because even if it doesn't seem to align, it will be beneficial in the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's extremely important. And something I feel like I'm learning now, like you just learn so many skills in general, having any type of job, whether it not be the specific one you're looking for. Um, but the skills, the experience, I mean, even learning from people who've been in their career for 20, 30 years, like those are professional skills that you can take in any industry. And I think that's super important. Like, um, Brandon was saying, don't be so rigid, be open to the experience and take what take with it what you find valuable thank you so much um we can move on to another question that we had in the chat which is how do you build the personality of your career brandon i feel like that's you (laughs) um well when we were in when i was in school many eons ago i feel like that was when the conversations first started happening about branding yourself and again we'll go back to just because i own a social media company now how you present yourself online is really important. To Rain's point, you want to be authentic, but you also want to be very intentional. So I think it's just kind of aligning yourself with the right type of content that you're creating, that you're sharing, that you're reproducing. Um, So like imitation is the biggest form of flattery, as they say. So really looking to people whose careers you want to emulate. Again, I think that Rain mentioned that. For me at that time, it was the Andy Cohens. It was someone who I had an ego. I wanted to be on TV, but I also wanted to produce and develop behind the scenes. So his career path was very interesting to me because he was behind the scenes first and basically was like, okay, well, I'll create a show for myself now. Yeah, I created this uh, second in command water bottle. That was an original pitch to Bravo for a TV show about assistance in the entertainment industry. He he presented Uh, this with his project presentation and had water bottles on the table for every student with the label for the show that he was pitching for Bravo. And I still have it almost 10 years later. Yeah. Um, so again, just really like looking and kind of siphoning through other people that you respect in whatever industry you're going into, 
is really important. Looking at what what they're reading, what they're watching, what they're posting, um, and just remembering that like through your specific lens, it will be different. So it's never like about totally a carbon copy, carbon copying what they're doing, but it's looking at what they're doing and how they're doing it, and then through your lens and like what you would change or what you would leverage. So I don't know. That was a very long winded answer, but I think you get the gist. Yeah. I think the personality of your career is really the personality of you. I mean, the work that you like to do is going to, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to click. I think, um, Anthony, I, I totally understand. And I think I, was, I think Brandon, I was on the like tail end of the like branding yourself conversation. And I was like, what does that mean? I'm not a business. Like, and then it was like, oh wait, the work that I'm doing is work that I like to do. And that is the personality of my career because the work that you've been doing, if you're inspired by, if you're intentional, like you recognize where you're going, really, it starts to, it's like your path opens up. I think that's like a, a creative thing that I've heard that's like you keep doing and then then all of a sudden the path clears. Um, And I think that that's very true when you're doing work that you really like to do. And for me, that's been a lot through like personal work and figuring out what that means. Um, But building the personality of, of your career, I think really starts with the work that you do, the work that you say yes to, the work that you say no to. Um, I think I've had a I'm in a position in my career where I feel very grateful and thankful to be able to say no to certain projects because I know where I'm going and I know what I like to do and I know what I want to do. And it's okay when you, after you kind of do say yes and keep saying yes for a long time, you realize where you can start to say no. And by saying yes so many times, Julia told me this actually, by saying yes so many times, you figure out what you don't want. Um, and I think that is really how you build the personality of your career. Can I say one more thing, just, you know, going off what rain was saying is a thought that I had in that building your career, it's also really important that you surround yourself with people in that career or in that field that you have respect for, and that you can learn from, um, something that I've always tried to live by. And it's really hard, um, because it can really give you like an inferiority complex is try to be the least educated person in that group. Like always be learning from people who know more than you in whatever that is. So in your career, like be making friends who are already doing what you're interested in or in that field and really like be willing to absorb that knowledge because like that really helps build, build the career for you and the respect that you have for it. Sorry about that. Did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? Jasmine, did you want to jump in on this? Yeah, I think what Brandon was saying is extremely important. I think modeling yourself after people you admire in the industry, I think is super important. I think having a good work ethic is something that you can see and it's you know, who you surround yourself with. Like I can only speak from current experience. I work at a company that, you know, lives by these certain values. And it's something that like, I've found that like we keep each other accountable with. And I think about like my future and like, I think about things I'm doing in this role now. And I feel like though it may not be what I originally intended to work in, but it's something that I think personal wise, it's, making me grow as a person, making me have clear, more honest work ethic. And I think that's something I can take with me in the future, whether that be through marketing or in my personal life. If I, you know, keep writing personally, I think, um, taking every lesson is super important. Um, and again, modeling after who you surround yourself with, if they're a positive influence, I think is also very, very, um, good for young people to be around. So I think Cassidy's going to ask one last question that we have from the chat. All right. So my last question is, did you complete an internship while at ASU? And if so, what role did social media networking play in securing these opportunities? Or did the internship shape your understanding of the importance of social media networking? 
I can talk a little bit about this. So I interned for NBC Universal as a campus ambassador. Um, I believe it was my junior to senior year. And that was super interesting because we would make marketing campaigns of new releases. And this was right in the peak of COVID. So I was able to have one event um, where we screamed, it was happy death day. And it was in promotion for, um, I I can't remember, it was a Catherine Newton movie from Universal, but it was super interesting because a lot of the outreach that I did was through social media um, with the event that I had everyone found out about it through my posts on social media. I even like went old school and put up banners like at the MU at ASU. So that was super interesting. I got to research like what ways in which um, movie companies do like local outreach, like they went on like a college campus and research in what ways that these movies could appeal to young people. And there was even the Minions at the time was originally supposed to re- be released in that year, I believe 2020. And they were going really hard in marketing towards that college age demographic. And I got to learn a little bit. And it was because the reason they were marketing so hard at that age is because of the power of social media and the power of memes and Twitter and TikToks that that age group would make. And they knew that that's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about how many seats they're going to fill at the movie theaters. And that equates to revenue and money and income. Um, So that was really interesting to kind of learn maybe a movie like Minions, you know, isn't necessarily targeted towards college age students, but the fact that they were going so hard at marketing it towards them, kind of the further implications of what that meant. So that was really interesting. And there's a lot more to that. I think that like is super cool to explore of like how marketing also aligns with media and why they make certain business decisions that they do. And it's all kind of related. Um, so that was really cool. Yeah. I I'll speak to that too. I, I, didn't have too many internships. I had one internship that um, I actually like. I actually worked on in tandem with like a a course, and it was for a um, it was for a like a Christian brands like a company, and they do a tra- very old traditional like style of um, advertising. They do catalogs and stuff, and so they brought me on to you know bring their catalog marketing onto social media. And I was like, uh, I don't know. I just, it was an internship. I just found like, it was my friend's mom's, like it was a company she worked at. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to get me anything. Um, but actually it did in the end. And so I've actually been able to call on someone who I worked with at that internship, which was in 2017. <laughs> um, they live in LA now and we're working on a project together. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, amazing. But pr- really, I think I want to say that like, again, no matter what, um, no matter what position you're in, even if you're like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This doesn't align with me. This isn't aligned with, I don't think I'm going to use this in my portfolio in the future. Still going, doing a great job, making connections with people who are there, who you see when you're there that you're working with regularly um, and keeping in contact with those people, definitely I I can say I'm having a really good time (laughs) working on that with her. So I'm really excited about that one. And it's not even Christian related or anything because I was like, every, you know, I went in with like these beliefs about where I was working and at the end of the day, like found out those weren't true. And also that, um, you know, I can, something can come from it. So I think there's a second part of that question that I missed answering, but I think just mainly like treating your internships as like actual jobs and, and making the connections that you make there, even if, you know, you're like, I don't know how I'm going to leverage this in the future. Um, People are great. People are nice and people want to help. So make sure you do your part in making those connections. And I think the gist was, did you have an internship while in school? So that's, it was that right, Sam? Yeah, I think that was the question, Cassidy. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Cassidy. Um, and yes, I did. And I have a really specific viewpoint on how internships should work because I did so many of them. Um, so my suggestion is you need to have an internship locally in your junior year. Try and have two, one in each semester doing two different things. By your senior year, in your last semester, you should really be uh, entering an internship in whatever city you want to have a career in. The reason for that is say that you have an internship the first semester of your senior year, and then you go back to school to like party and have fun with your friends. 
by the time you graduate, there's already been another crop of interns in whatever role you previously held. So the priority of filling a position with, with an intern is going to go to the last one they had because there's such a heavy turnover in the entertainment industry. Like you come and go, they've already forgotten. So you really want to end where you want to be. And it's important to do that in the city that you want to work because that's where your network is going to be building. During an internship, you're going to be meeting a lot of people, other interns who are going to be entering jobs that you're going to be able to leverage that connection your supervisors in that uh, specific internship who may see your work and want to place you in a job right away or have a friend like, hey, so-and-so is doing a production over here. I know you don't really want to do PA work, but you know, would you be willing to do that? Well, for money, yes. As a graduate, you're going to be willing to do just about anything. So like that is my uh, specific entry point. And it kind of goes to, there was another question here, how would you recommend getting your foot in the industry right out of the university? And it's really positioning yourself where you can, how you can. So like you want to get as much experience as possible before you graduate, which is why I recommend a local internship, because then you're not in positioning yourself like the expense of going to live somewhere else for such a short amount of time. Like there's so much available to you locally, you just have to find it. And that's where your network has already been built over three years of being in school. So leverage that. Um, And then kind of segue out into something else, knowing like, Taking inventory of what you can afford is a really important thing because I have a lot of friends who I graduated with and went to LA not taking into account the expense of living there. So set yourself up for success. If that means not going to LA the day after you graduate, stay a year, like continuing building connections. You can do that through social media and then move to a city where you can do so comfortably. LA, you're never going to be comfortable, but like more comfortably with, you know, more security. Um... And so, yeah, that would be kind of the the game plan. If I were to recommend anything to you is really try and leverage what you can locally first. Thank you, Brandon, for transitioning to that last question that's in the chat, because I wanted to try to get to that if we could in terms of that shift or, or sort of advice on that shift um, from getting your foot in the industry right out of the university. So Jasmine or Rain, um, if you have thoughts on that as well, that would be great. Yeah, um, I think um, something, and this is like a learned from experience, I wish I would have done this um, because I've seen it uh, work out so well for some of my peers. Um, Make your own work, (laughs) Um, like continue doing the work that you're doing in school. Um, I don't know why that didn't click for me when I graduated, but um, for some reason I was like, okay, well, that's enough making films, like time to go get a big girl job. Like, I don't know why I did that, but, um, I think the big, the best way is to continue making films when you can, where you can, um, and just making sure that you are, are, especially if it's creative, sorry, I don't know what industry you mean, but if you're talking about (laughs) filmmaking and television, continue to make those things. I wish that I had spent more time working on ideas that I had had in university um, after I graduated. Um, And I always say like, dang, I wasted three years of New York, (laughs) of New York scenery, um, because I just didn't think to continue making my own work. And I did do great work for other people, working on other people's sets. But for me, especially right now, um, and thinking about the the position that I'm in currently, we hire so many freelancers who are just working on their own, building their own teams, exactly like you're doing in school right now, um, building the, you know, your production team, making, you know, movies on the go, um, making music videos for your friends, all of that stuff. Keep doing that after school, <laughs> just like, you you know, the people you're doing it with might change. But at the end of the day, if you're working on, um, you're building creative assets um, and you're publishing those assets, sharing them is also a big thing. Um, But if you're creating that and you're sharing it and you're reaching out to the people, to the places that you want to work with that in your portfolio, it's wonderful. Um, I, I, my portfolio went stagnant for three years, like pretty much because I wasn't working on my work. And thankfully I found an avenue that works for me. But I know with my whole heart that it would, I would probably be in a different position had I focused more on continuing to um, build my creative portfolio, making, you know, um, media. So that's Quan. Quan, That's my 
that's my suggestion. <laughs> One last thing, tip that everybody always told me, but I don't know that I really took took it to heart. Utilize all the resources you have in school. Um, there are so, so many things at school, so many people at ASU in general um, that are willing to help you, you know, get connected with people, whether it not be within film and media, but maybe it's in the Herberger school or like I went to some Herberger school events and like they actually reached out to me one time to help plan an event for them. And like, that was super cool because just because they had known me from conversations and events that I had gone to with them really, really take advantage right now, because at some point they won't be available to you. Um, and so reach out to professors, keep in contact with them, really utilize the free resources that they have because it's such a honor to have that and then to not have it once you graduate. Um, whether it's like the LinkedIn, you know, premium accounts, like ASU has so many resources that, you know, you don't even know about. And if you don't ask, you don't know. So definitely think it's worth researching how you can get connected with people you know, it like you, the film clubs that you guys were talking about, that was something I kind of wish I would have taken more advantage of. Um, and if I could go back and do things differently, I would definitely take more advantage of the resources that were available to me while being on campus as well or close to campus. And Julia, can I say one more thing? Just because looking at your pretty little face reminds me of this. Um, is what Jasmine was saying about like leveraging what's around you right now I can't tell you how many times I've reached out to Julia with questions or it, insight, like just her professional opinion on things. And there's no easier networking experience than with your professors who have actual office hours for you to attend. And that doesn't mean you need to be showing up with like questions about homework. Go like learn about your professors, show an interest in them and what they're teaching. Like they're doing it because they have a passion for it. And so they love having conversations about it. And so while those resources do leave at a certain point upon graduation, like I've reached out to so many, I don't know, Julia, is Christopher Bradley still part of the program? Absolutely. I can't, I can't tell you like just how impressed I am with him. And anytime I've needed anything, a script looked at, or like just a thought, I just wanted the sounding board. He's always there. And those relationships endure like they remember students from a decade ago as long as it's maintained so show up to office hours like inconvenience yourself when you could be like oh i'm gonna go grab lunch i'm gonna go hang out with a friend if you don't do those little things now like you're definitely not going to do them when you get to a new city and everything is exponentially harder because you're on your own like these people are here and they want to support you and so i just also want to take a minute to say like how much I appreciate Julia and having her as my professor and making me think critically about things that were really easy to brush off or challenge myself and how I perceive myself or what my abilities were. Like you're not going to find someone who is more invested in you than Julia Hemberg. So show up for her the way she shows up for you guys because it's really rare to find that in a professor. Um, and then can I, I just wanted, I have a few book recommendations. Can I just give those quick? Sure. Please. Um so Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, I think is a really good one for creatives. Um, it is the same woman who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, but don't let that deter you, okay? Because this book was really interesting and it basically says that the universe like gives you a spark of an idea. And if you don't capture it, and if you don't like start to execute it, it goes on to somebody else, which I think is really important because in entertainment, a lot of times we think we came up with like an original idea. And maybe it is, but if you just let it sit stagnant, like I'm going to get to that eventually, the universe gives it to somebody else who will actually act on it. So it's a really great book, just if you're kind of feeling like you don't have something um, that is bringing you like that spark. Um, Atomic Habits by James Clear is a really great one, because it basically like throughout this conversation, it's kind of identifying yourself in the space you want to be. So to Rain's point earlier about like identifying yourself as a director, if that's what you're doing in school, that is who you are. And like, it's okay to capture that title and call yourself that. Um, Cause it's kind of like they used to tell us in school, like dress for the position you want. Well, when I showed up to do PA work, I was dressed like Ryan Seacrest. So it looked a little ridiculous. So I think more so just like position yourself in the role that you see yourself doing is really important. Like reaffirm that to yourself every day. Like I am a director, it may be on a small scale. It may not be all the time, but like that is who I am. 
um, which also then segues into Chasing Failure by Ryan Leak. And I'll type these in the chat, but it's basically saying like, there will be no growth if you don't fail every day. The most successful people are willing to constantly fail to keep refining their skill. So don't let yourself get in your own head too much. Like if you mess up, like you, you can try again. That's the best part about the life that we have. And then for anyone wanting to do anything in writing, you have to read On Writing by Stephen King because it, yeah, it's so good, isn't it, Rain? Um, it really just takes um, kind of the insecurity out of writing that when you feel like you have a block or like you're the only person experiencing some of these things, it really kind of gives you an idea of how to allocate your time to just write anything. So those were four that I've kind of always shared with people if they want a recommendation on things. Um, so I'm giving that to you all now. I hope that someone at least picks up one of those books because I promise you will get something out of it. Well, those are really excellent suggestions. And all of you, I think, have provided some really, really important insights and advice. And just also speaking to your experience. Um, also, what you touched on, um, all of you at the end, I do really believe the faculty here at FMS are very invested in our students, um, whether you are an online student, whether you are an in-person student, um, we really do want to be here for you and support you in the ways that we can. If you're a little shy about coming to office hours, please just shoot us an email, send us a note through Canvas. Um, let us know sort of what you're interested in and and maybe we can provide feedback. Maybe we can connect you with someone. But, um, you know, while you're still here, please do take advantage of those things. And then also certainly take advantage of the kinds of advice you've gotten here today. So I want to thank, first of all, our alumni panelists. Thank you so much. Um, it's just been such a pleasure to hear from all of you. Thank you also to our excellent moderators, our current FMS students. Um, and to all of you who are in attendance. And for those of you, um, up for our students, um, please be on the lookout for our next alumni panel, which is going to take place on Friday, April 7th from 10 to 11 um, a.m. Arizona time. You'll get information about that. And please feel free to um, reach out to me at any time um, with questions or other ideas you have for things you'd like to know about from our alumni. So thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great Friday. Nice to see all of you.